Today we're gonna look at what happens to your overall resistance when you combine resistors both in series and in parallel. Hi, I'm Daniel Bogdanoff. Thanks for tuning in to The Two Minute Guru. Last week we talked about the fundamentals of resistance and today we're gonna look at what happens if you take resistors and combine them. There's two different ways to combine them. One is to combine them in parallel, so that'd be like drinking out of two straws at the same time. Or the other way is to combine them in serial, so it's like you're drinking out of them in sequence. On my board, I've now connected two resistors in series. That's like trying to drink out of two of these little straws connected together. It's gonna be much harder. I'm gonna have to work harder to get my drink. So on channel one, I still am at one volt. That's what the power supply has to supply to get five milliamps of current through this one resistor. Let's look at channel two, which is gonna be connected to both of these resistors in series. You can see now that the power supply has to supply two volts. So it's working twice as hard as before. So for series resistors, and especially if they're identical resistance values like this, both 200 ohms, it's gonna require twice as much voltage to get the same five milliamps of current through it. I now have two resistors hooked up in parallel on my board. So remember when you were a kid, you'd get a bunch of straws together and try and drink through a bunch of them at once, and you would get more drink that way? That's exactly how these resistors work. So if I hook up my channel one to these resistors in parallel, you can see that the power supply only has to supply half a volt instead of one volt to get the same current through them. So having resistors in parallel equivalently halves the resistance, assuming your resistors are the same ohm value. Now, if your resistances aren't the same and they have different values, you're gonna get a proportionally different current and voltage through each resistor. And like a good mathematician, if you take that to zero and infinity, so you have infinite resistance and zero resistance, all of the current and signal is gonna flow through the lower resistance value. So for your circuit, air has an effectively infinite resistance, no current's gonna flow through it, and wires are gonna have an effectively zero resistance, so all of the current is gonna flow through your wires. Now if you think about conductance, it's just the inverse of everything we just talked about for resistance. So if you play this video backwards, you can learn all about conductance. Speaking of backwards, an interesting tidbit is that the units for conductance used to be mo, which is just ohms backwards, and it was changed to Siemens at the suggestion of Lord Kelvin, who you might know as the temperature guy. That's all we have time for today. Next video, we're gonna talk about the basics of current. If there's something you want me to cover in a future video, let me know in the comments below. And of course, make sure you subscribe to the Keysight Oscilloscope's YouTube channel to stay up to date with all of our latest scope tips. I'm Daniel Bogdanoff. You can follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.